Hello and welcome to this NDTV exclusive. Now, we are in the middle of the semi-final assembly elections of 2022, which many see as the trailer for the big battle of 2024. And a key player in that is going to be my guest today, Prashant Kishore. He joins me here. Thanks very much indeed, Prashant Kishore. As always, there's a challenge when I introduce you, what to call you? <laughs> if I say political strategist, you say I'm not a political strategist. If I say Trinamool, you say I'm not Trinamool. So, you tell me what I should describe you as. Political aide who is sitting at home doing nothing. Political aide who is, <laughs> who is who continues to be on break sitting at home. Continues to be on break sitting at home. Yes. Okay. No, but tell me on a more serious note because let's pick up the thread from where we last left it, which was immediately after the West Bengal elections. We spoke in May. The Trinamool, whose campaign you were closely working with, thumping majority. And uh, you made that big dhamaka. You said that I'm giving up the political consultancy space. Yes. You stand by that. Because absolutely. No, absolutely. No. I've kept the word. I'm, I'm, I have left the space and uh, uh, I continue, as I said, I mm. continue to be on break uh, in search of looking to do what possibly I could do in, in future. Okay. Because if one looks at what you've been up to since then, the impression is that you are still very much actively involved in politics, especially for the Trinamool. Many leaders, whether it is in Goa or it is in the Northeast, say that they have joined the Trinamool because of, you know, your conversations with them. IPAC, the political consultancy you head, is closely working with the Trinamool. Yeah, so in Goa, it's working in the Northeast. It's, it's, so how have you given it up? It's, it's because, uh, you know, what has happened post Bengal, mm. that Trinamool and IPAC has entered into some kind of arrangement to help each other okay. and or work together uh, in their this pursuit to establish national footprint. And in that, IPAC continues to work with uh, Trinamool in some, on some occasions, wherever they feel uh, a need for a help or a advice mm. from someone like me. And it could be either from Trinamool or from IPAC. Mm. I'm available. So I talk to them or I meet some people. Say, for example, probably you are referring to a couple of leaders coming on television and saying that they have joined Trinamool. Luisine, let me, let's go one by one. Luisine Filero, yes. who is the big Congress leader who joined the Trinamool in Goa, yes. he said Prashant Kishore approached me. No, he, he said, and I think on your program only, that he has spoken to Prashant Kishore and not Trinamool. Yes, so, to, yes, that's true. You spoke to the Yes, Luzi absolutely. He, he was right and there is nothing to deny there. Hmm. Uh, as I said, Trinamool and IPAC, they are working together. They have chosen three states to begin with. The Tripura, the Meghalaya and, uh, and, and Goa. Hmm. IPAC has been working in Goa. In that context, they would have met Luzin Flero. Now, what happens is which, if you are that big a leader, yes. Even if you have made up your mind, you would like to, and you, you think you can talk to a Prashant Kishore kind of guy, then you come and you talk. Not to make a decision, but maybe to probably validate what is already there in your mind. Right. So I'm not saying that, yes, I'm, when somebody comes and, uh, and same is the case with Dr. Mukul Sangma. Yes, Mukul he, Sangma so in, in, Mukul in, Sa in Meghalaya, Mukul Sangma, who again, just to tell our viewers, is the Congress leader who, with yeah, again, a large next number of minister. MLAs, Actually, it's a crossover yes, to the Trinamool. So, the crossing over, whether it, it is in the case of Lujin Falero or Dr. Mukul Sangma, if you dig deeper, you realize that they were not happy with their, what they were doing. That's and another they, point. No, the they were, and they were, they the were, they, they were make, probably they have made up their mind to move. While they are moving out, they happen to meet me or I happen to meet them and then the discussion happens. I say my point of view that if you are leaving Congress, yes. it is better to remain at least ideologically on the same side of the aisle. Okay, that, and in that, yes. I could suggest that if you want, you can try out uh, Trinamool Congress. But they gave you, a very different impression. They made no, it seem very much like it was conversations with you, literally. Yes, that I'm, saying, their mind. I'm saying conversation with me that might have changed their mind. But they came with this mindset that what, what are the options? What should I do? Of course. Should I make a regional party? Should I That's go to X party or Y party? In that context, if they have spoken to me and my saying something right. would have made them decide in favor of TMC, that is fair. Okay, but that's a wider point. I'm still trying to figure out 
exactly what i'm doing what are you doing <laughs> and 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 that's why i want to i want to go back again to that point that you'd made and when you said that you wanted a break you wanted to do something different yes in all fairness you were talking to the congress this is now public knowledge yes i i'm talking i have you were been, talking uh, no to the i was talking to congress or my little engagement with trinamool continued engagement with trinamool as yes. more as a friend or somebody who has worked mm. with them all adds up to the same thing my desire to figure it out if there is a political formation that could be put together mm. uh, which is if more effective than what the present opposition parties a low uh, individually or collectively represents to take so, on the bjp to 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 be in position to provide a much more uh, 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 a better fight in 2024 and beyond okay but so coming... that's that's my job right now that's in my head that i am looking to find what could be that possible formation in that context i continue to engage with many political parties many political parties but but right now it seems to be much more closely aligned with the trinamool though as you said you were exploring no, different options I, I, if i tell you the number of hours i have spent post uh, post bengal result the maximum number of hours and the resource uh, at personal level i have spent was uh, when i was talking with congress almost 5 months i have given every minute of mine uh, thinking about you were talking to the congress for 5 months yes between uh, may to i uh, know i was talking for more than 2 two, two years but post bengal i'm i'm talking uh, post bengal between may to september yeah, it's almost 4 5 months so may to september there were continuous talks going on in yes, the congress yes and and talks are not in the air to have such talks you have to go back you have to work you have to find solutions you have to uh look at uh, various possibilities so i'm saying mentally and this was with a view once again this is interesting because the impression was that there were talks but the fact that you're saying it was this extensive no, and think, and at, and at this duration no i i think uh, uh, when you spoke to uh, priyanka gandhi few days yes, back she did she, mention she she said the same thing that it if It, this was with a view towards your joining the congress yes no see first of whether you join or you work together the the issue is we have to have a solution no no i know and, but i'm trying to as, understand as for, for others it looks very easy that you know it looks natural or obvious that prashant kishore and congress should come together and work right but it's actually not that easy both side given who we are what we do what we have done and our limitations uh, or desire to do what we want to do both side has to take literally a leap of faith to come together and work but that didn't happen with the congress yes it didn't happen and, and no, i'm just answering no no i know I'm but i'm answering to your question that what i'm doing okay but but, but i'm still trying to understand what happened with the congress why was there a breakdown no because uh, as was told by from uh, you you heard it from her itself priyanka that, gave a very generic kind no, of if i may say so a very political answer saying there were issues on both yes. sides i'm hoping you're not a conventional politician no 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 so I, i'm going to get a little bit more of a candid answer so from I'm you exactly i would say that this uh coming together of me and congress in yes. required a leap of faith from both side yes and probably for reasons uh valid for each side we could not take that leap of faith and and for my side i can tell you but i had a bad experience working with congress in up yes and hence many things which otherwise i would have said yes i was more skeptical because i didn't want to get in a situation mm. where i get in i take the responsibility and i feel uh, my hands are tied or i'm not able to that's, do something similarly that's to be fair to be fair to congress leadership mm. because of my background because of who i am and what i have done in last few years they they are not wrong in being a skeptical uh, about whether i am going to be 100% loyal to them or because i don't fit in the traditional metrics of loyalty you know so they had to take that leap of faith and so trust they, me and they didn't have that there was some no, doubt about both side both side probably lacked the courage to take that leap of faith okay that's still i must say uh, somewhat of a general kind of answer no but what there is no, no, no point, because i'm trying to understand no point in, no no i'm trying to understand no there is no point in giving you a specifics of a discussion which was essentially a private discussion fair enough it's not but fair on my part i understand understand but the idea was broadly that you were going to uh, possibly join the party no of, of course join not possibly join the party join the party yes. and play some kind of role in terms of getting it into better shape just 
getting it into no, it, a it, more it was, kind of it was, competitive I, I can tell space. You, I can tell you it was not about any specific election. It was not even about 2024 election. It was mm. more about uh, you know, re rebooting and uh, uh, re uh, strengthening the Congress from medium to long term point of view. Okay. Organizationally, and of course, when you are talking about a political party, elections are inbuilt into it. Okay, but, but this still it was, was not about a particular election, uh, uh, whether a state election or uh, even for that matter, 2024 general elections. Okay, but in whatever uh, role that you would have come in, the Gandhis would still very much be around. Yes, of course. Okay, so they would continue to be the leadership of the party. You would be a kind of CEO. I'm like no, no, I'm not getting into what, what it was. But okay. I can tell you the discussion was at the highest level. It was, uh, it went on for almost, it, it started almost two years back. In between, because of the elections mm. and the COVID, we just put it on the side. Post-Bengal election, we had intense four months of engagement. And uh, broadly, broadly, I would say 90% of the po points we were in agreement but for few issues which became critical. But it was about, you know, having this uh, faith in each other. Uh, and that somehow the at the trust last in minute. each other. Well, one of the things on the trust I wanted to ask you, which was interesting to me, was that at the time when you said that you were talking to the Congress, it appeared it was around the same time that you were also talking to these Congress leaders no, no, with no, a view no. of joining the no, Trinamool. No, no, not at all. Never. No? No. There was no, there was no parallel no, there, with that. There was no overlap. There was no overlap. So uh, that was not a reason for a no, breakdown of trust. No, I, I, you would have heard it from Congress's circle, but I give yes. you the give you the timelines for the clarity of your viewers also. The Lucien Falero I met only in uh, end September October after closure of discussion with Congress. By then the talks with yes, the Congress. We, we when you say the Congress, you, when you say highest level, you're obviously talking to Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi. Yes, yes. I have not had discussion with anybody else. Only with them. Only with the talk. And by then the talks with them had. Yes, we, we decided that let's leave it for the moment. So you're talking to these leaders, uh, Congress leaders. No, and, and I'm not saying talking okay, okay, to no, Congress. Okay, no, no, let me, let me finish the question. Yes. I'm, I'm just saying that whatever conversation that was happening, many saw that, especially within the Congress, that this was a kind of revenge or sour grapes. No, that it's, Prashant it's, Kishore's it's, it's because uh, it's arrangement with the Congress didn't work out. No, what so is, now he's what is attacking there, what, us and he's targeting us. What is us. there for me to revenge? I'm too small a person to take a revenge on a party as big as Congress. I admire Congress as an institution. So there's no question of me taking any revenge. Let me your, just correct why it has happened. Because tweets, see the yeah. talks where we closed the discussion, say, September. Yes. Naturally, there was no formal announcement or a press conference that we are closing the discussion. Right. So what you hear is the next news that Mr. Luzin Falero has joined mm. Trinamool, yes. which was say in mid October or end October. Right. So you are realize re you are getting to know about the status or speculating about the status of the talks only when you see some something happening. The talks. Got closed in no, September, no, no, and September on. only. At, you say you admire the Congress. You tweeted in I October. I admire you, the Congress, yeah, yes. Yeah, you tweeted in October. Unfortunately, there are no quick fix solutions to the deep-rooted problems and yes. structural weaknesses of the GOP, yes. grand yes. old party, yes. indicating Congress. the Congress. In December, you said the idea and space the Congress represents is vital, but Congress's leadership is not divine yes. right. When the party has lost more than 90% elections yes. in the last 10 years. So just, I'm so glad you're reading the two tweets. I, I rarely tweet, but look at the first tweet. When this uh, Hathras uh, incident, Lakhimpur incident happened, yes. there are so many people I get pissed off when, when people saying, oh, this is the new Belchi moment. Oh, this is, is it going to revive Congress? Mm. I just don't know what is the merit in making such a statement. You are unnecessarily creating expectations or putting pressure on others. What I said, that if you are looking for revival of Congress purely coming out of Lakhimpur, mm. it's, you're going to be disappointed. That's going, that has actually has happened. In the second tweet, what I have said, mm. this second tweet was in the context of this intense debate whether there could be opposition yes. without Congress or not. It's a futile uh, debate. I'm the first one to say that without Congress, yes. the space and the idea which Congress party is supposed to be representing, there cannot be an opposition, an effective opposition at national level. But that does not mean the Congress with the same CWC. That does not mean Congress under the same leader. That does not mean Congress the way it is functioning today. Congress as a party and Congress party in the present mm. formation are two different things. Okay, so, but that's, it, but that's important. You're the, saying that you cannot imagine, it, you, it is not realistic 
to consider an anti-BJP opposition that does not have the Congress. Yes. You have to have the Congress. It has to have the Congress, but not necessarily Congress in the present form. Okay. Congress need to reform, revamp itself, reboot itself to be able to defeat BJP or be a far more effective opposition than what it has been. Okay, so if... And you don't need me. That's, I, that's what I put the data. In last 10, 12 years, right. Congress in the present formation is not winning anything. Okay, but... So yes, they can remain the opposition party, but they're sure. not winning anything. They okay. win election. So they are winning election only till the re result day. So you hear the senior Congress leaders, they are talking about they are winning this state, they are winning that state, they are winning, and call them on the election result day, they will all run away. Okay, we'll see what happens when these, when <laughs> no, the season cycle of it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, In we'll general, have... but, but, uh, Vashu, you have been interviewing these people, you have covered at least 60, 70 elections have happened in the last 10 years. How many, Congress has won only 5 elections out of those 70. So okay. in every, ele but prior to the election result, you hear the same thing from the senior Congress leaders. Okay, that fair we enough. are going to defeat BJP. Okay, so you're saying for that BJP. the Congress needs to change, which had you joined the Congress, you may have had a role no, to play in that. No, but no, I'm hold not on. saying it's not about me. No, no, I'm saying that didn't work out. But now I'm asking you a different question. That given the fact that the Congress is both indispensable to an anti-BJP front, but is still not up to the scratch, what then is the alternative in terms of Hold on, hold on a second. In terms of what it appears to a lot of people is that you seem to have decided that Mamta Banerjee, Trinamool, is actually in some ways a more effective opposition. No. Uh, or at least an important, uh, can provide leadership to an anti-BJP no. opposition, which is why, which is why, whether you say you're not involved, your outfit is closely working now with her to expand her footprint outside of West Bengal. Yes. Is that, is, can Mamta now be the poll for a kind of anti-BJP opposition, especially with your no, backing? I, this is complete misunderstanding on the part of most, because first you want to, you have your own uh, idea of what is happening and then you retrofit. Okay. What is happening between Trinamool and IPAC? Trinamool, after the victory in West Bengal, they want to expand their footprint mm. outside Bengal, mm. which any party or leader would do after such a emphatic victory. Mm. In that pursuit, they have associated with IPAC or they have signed up IPAC that let's do it together mm. because this was the winning combination in Bengal. In that, they have chosen three states. If you put together Tripura, Meghalaya and Goa, at a national level, it all adds up to five to six Lok Sabha seats. Right. How can even assume that in these three states, Trinamool is very successful yes. and they win everything. Yes. Still, if it affects five Lok Sabha seats. Okay. So how can you become a national party by winning five Lok Sabha seats, even if Trinamool were to be successful and win? Okay, what then let does, me ask you the bigger but, question no, no, then. i tell you what, what it does. Then yes. Why IPAC would be interested in doing this thing is because it does provide a great deal of learning right. that if a party with, with a regional footprint wants to have a national footprint, mm. what it takes. So the choice of states, which no one is paying attention to, and the model that is being followed, Tripura, Meghalaya and uh, Goa, are three different things which is going to provide wealth of data in, and first-hand information, both to Trinamool and IPAC, to figure it out that if they have to do a, go, uh, beyond, uh, go beyond, and if they have to do a party at the national level, what it takes. So Tripura is an organic, bottom-up approach. Meghalaya is more inorganic, where you have become all of a sudden by principal a large, opposition. By a large number of MLAs crossing MLS over to you. crossing over to you. And Goa is uh, trying to build the party in an electoral chaotic uh, atmosphere. At, so, a, at a kind of last minute. Last uh, minute, in three, minute, three months. Okay. So, so if so, you put these three together, okay. you probably have got all two, three, four ways right. how a party could be built. Okay, for somebody who keeps saying that, that IPAC is, is very different to what you're doing, I have to say that you still sound very much like you're very closely involved no, I with, what, involved with what in IPAC the, no. is doing. No, but, I, but I don't to, want to get into that. that. No, 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 no. Let, Again, let me, you, they don't create this guy. The involvement is that if you are Trinamool and you are saying that I, let's go pan-India, my in, involvement is in making these strategic choices that do a Tripura or do a Meghalaya or do a Goa okay. rather than going a Odisha okay, or let me Bihar ask you the, or, or Madhya Pradesh. Let, let, let me ask but you. Let me ask you. But I, when it comes to actual execution on the ground, yes, it's IPEC that does the work with Okay, Trinamool. So let me ask you now the bigger question, Prashant. 
which is that when you say that you are interested in exploring the idea of a, trying to create an opposition that can give a more robust fight in 2024. And beyond. And beyond. When you say that, so the Congress clearly is, has a long way to go to pull up its socks. The Trinamool, as you say, is still very nascent. The presence yes. that they have outside in uh, Bengal is still small. So the fundamental question is that, is it then real, is, it, is a opposition front possible? to take on the BJP. Let's just start with 2024 for now. Yeah, so it, is it, it possible? It, are they beatable in 2024 or are they yes, say home for, and dry? So let's go other way around. Mm. Is it possible to defeat BJP in 2024? Answer is emphatic yes. Yes. Yes, it is possible. Okay. But is it possible to do with the present set of players and the present formations? Probably no. Okay. Now, what? that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean mm. that one has to emerge as a national party or a national party has to become a national party. Maybe a little bit of readjustment, maybe a little bit of tweaking. i just give you an example. See, if you divide India in two parts, electorally, and you take East and South, mm. you start from Bihar, take uh, West Bengal, add Odisha, United uh, Andhra Pradesh, that is Telangana and Andhra, sure. Tamil Nadu and Kerala, right. roughly about 200 seats. And I'm including deliberately Bihar into it. With all what BJP has got, and the, at the peak of their popularity, they have been able to win 50 out of, uh, out of 50 odd seats out of these 200 seats. 150 M MPs who are elected today are literally, you know, for the want of a better word, they're uh, not in the making of the government or an opposition. Right. But imagine if Congress or Trinamool or a new outfit or combination of some of them and why it is happening is because in the remaining 350 seat, BJP is literally sweeping everything. Very high strike rate in, in a concentrated in, number of... In, in north and west. In north and west. And north, Hindi heartland now and goes... And in south and east, right? Yes. So what it tells you that if Congress or Trinamool or for that matter any other party or a combination of these parties, they realign themselves and reboot their resources and strategy, say in about 200 odd seats, and they pull 100 seats out of that with a 50% strike rate, then you have a situation where opposition, so-called opposition and all its, uh, in, with all its element, reaches 250 to 60 with the present number. This is, this is then, then this having is quite to do, possible. No, no, I'm saying this is then having, them having to do well in the BJP's core that's area what I'm saying. in so, the north and in the so west. That's what I'm trying to say, that yes. when people say, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. It is about winning 100 odd seats, MP seats, in north and west okay. and in those areas principal, principally the fight is between Congress and BJP yes, that's and not only to. Congress but you see the performance of RJD in Bihar, yes. they got zero MP, performance of SP in UP, they, they did not do any better either, uh, performance of NCP in Maharashtra, they are almost the same uh, as uh, Congress's performance vis-a-vis -vis, uh, BJP. So I'm saying this region needs to be looked at with a fresh eye hmm. and all these players, hmm. they need to realign and recreate a new formation. Whether it is led by Congress, whether it is led by somebody else, I don't care. No, no, but the but to, if you, you have to start with here, that I, we have to be able to win 200 plus seat in the remaining 350 seats. But in those very seats that you mentioned, yes. in the in the Hindi belt and in the West, yes. these players have attempted to strike alliances. As you know, no. in Uttar Pradesh, there was a market no. no. last time, but, but, didn't work. But this is this is exactly Congress what… Congress and RJD have tied I'm, up, I'm didn't so, work. I'm so glad you are mentioning this. So all those who sit in television and say that opposition need to come together, come together, they have little or no idea that only one Grand Alliance had been successful. That was in 2015 Bihar, which we were part of. Yes. After that, all copycat arrangement in the name of bringing together the opposition mm. has not worked. Not a single one. Let me complete. Let so me then, complete. Yes. So what will work then? Because That's merely bringing, coming together of parties and leaders would not be sufficient. You need to have the narrative. You need to have a coherent outfit maybe of two different parties, but it has to work as one coherent unit to take on BJP. Give me an example. Like, let's take Uttar Pradesh, for example. Suppose that there has to be a better strike rate, winning rate for the opposition in UP, which at the moment, again, looks like it's 
going the BJP way, at least in these assembly elections. If you look at all the, I don't know what your take on UPS. <laughs> I'm not going to predict anything. But, but, you, but you broadly agree with what the polls are suggesting, that it's a BJP sweep? I, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Please, don't force me to say because I don't want to say that. I've okay, I, in a way, no, I think you're answering that question. No, I don't. Because, because whatever I say, I'm, <laughs> you know, it will be... Fine. Okay, misused. so let's look at UP. What will it... What? What is but the on UP, I do want to say something. Yes. So these round of uh, round of elections, yes. you said at the beginning that semi-final and all. Yes. Please do not make this mistake. These round of elections are not semi-final. It is quite possible that BJP wins everything in these round, this round, all and is still and is still go on to lose 2024, because if you look, just go back and see what happened in 2012. In 2012, UP was won by SP. In 2012, Uttarakhand was won by Congress. Right. Manipur was won by Congress. Punjab was won by Akalis. But result in 2024 was very 20, different. 2014. 2014, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Sure. So similarly, what happens today could get, could get reversed in 2024. So do not make this... This is the BJP propaganda that just because... No, no, this is not just BJP propaganda. It also sounds nice. It's a nice media catchphrase, semi-finals. Yes. Even though, the, even though it will not necessarily be backed... Uh, by, as you said, by, the, by facts or logic. But anyway, coming back to the point I was asking you, that if you take a state like UP, for example, because huge state, 80 seats, what should the opposition be doing differently if they want to be more competitive in 24? I'm still Well, I don't unclear. have, I don't... Uh, but for example... I, I don't, you know, you winning, what could be a winning a strategy for BJP, uh, for anti-BJP forces in yeah. uh, UP is a million dollar question. But I think if I have to give one line answer to it, uh, expanding the social base, which as a denominator, right. uh, probably is vital if you want to take on BJP in UP. Okay. The social uh, uh, base of uh, combined opposition has to be bigger than what it is today. Okay, so it has to ex expand into areas like the non-Yadav OBCs and so on, which is, which is where the BJP uh, is uh, now strong. Whether it's uh, non-Yadav OBCs, whether it is uh, uh, more consolidation Dalits. of Dalits or bringing forwards, I don't know. I'm just saying you have that the social, uh, social base which BJP is using as a denominator right now uh, or, uh, is quite formidable in UP. Unless you counter that, it is close to impossible to defeat. Do you see this, 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 this point you're making, this realignment or rethinking, do you see that taking shape? Because you've been in talks, hold on, you've been in talks with many of the principals here, you've been in talking to the Congress, you're in touch with Mamta very closely, you've been talking to Sharad Tawar. Do you see any no, of this see why it is taking happening? this long? Because it's a complicated thing. It cannot happen in one day or if... If it would have been so easy, yeah. I would not have been sitting at home. I would have been working with that formation. But it will come. It will happen. You think so? It will happen. Don't, don't, no, it, that's the power of democracy. It will force the political players uh, and, uh, and, and the various parties and stakeholders yes. to uh, rethink, realign, recreate if they want to remain relevant. Despite How long the, you can keep ignoring it? Despite the fact that most, again, most surveys and anecdotally suggest that the Prime Minister continues to remain no, yes. immensely popular. Hold on, you, you also said this. You, you, I mean, this is not he a is, he is pop See, if, the, if you are referring to, say, something like MOTN, which has just come. Mood of the nation. Mood of the nation. Just, done, yeah. just go back in 1987 and 88 and see the Rajiv Gandhi's popularity in the same MOTN survey, because this is the only survey that probably was valid even at that time. Right. As the, 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 sitting, the, the sitting Prime Minister of that time, uh, late Rajiv Gandhi ji, mm. he enjoyed the same popularity, but still he was defeated in 89 election. So, yes, as a Prime Minister, you can enjoy the popularity or approval rating of 50, 55 or 60, but still... Con you can, can be go, vulnerable. Yes, yes, of course you can be vulnerable. I told you the numbers that with all his approval rating in East and South, with the fragmented opposition, with no quote-unquote charismatic leader and uh, ca um, outfit, uh, yes. opposition outfit, yes. still BJP is, is able to mo mobilize only or win only 25% odd seats. So the, so the difference, some would argue, is that today the BJP has Hindutva as a very powerful political force in its hands, uh, which you are seeing across the board in state after state, of course, apart from the national level, what is your, and this can be a very long conversation, but in brief, what is the way in which 
opposition, how do you fight that? Because we're seeing opposition parties write different things. Kejriwal has his own way of playing a certain kind of, you know, pro-Hindu card. The Congress also flirts with temple tourism and so on. What do you think well, is a way of taking on First of all, we Hindu have to talk. understand and realize that BJP's popularity or their strength is not only function of Hindutva. Yes, I, I, yes, I it's are, one of the most important elements. There are many yeah. elements. I'm no, just, the, yeah. the, the two more, two big elements which we need to factor in is one in this hyper-nationalism thing, this Rashtrawad mm. ka jo agenda hai. Mm. It's as important, if not more, increasingly as Hindutva. And then you have the welfareism, yes. you know, as they... Uh, I, I believe Arun Sori said it's BJP <laughs> Congress plus cow. Yes. So the so the household and individual level welfareism, uh, nationalism, and Hinduism put together, it's a quite a formative uh, formidable narrative. Yes. Unless you have ability through your own narrative to better two of it. Mm you stand a very little chance against BJP. And I tell you why BJP underperforms in uh, uh, Vidhan Sabha elections, the assembly elections. Data s tells us that they do. Of course. And people simplify it by saying that it's because of Modi factor. Yes. Yes. But it's one of the reasons is this nationalism element doesn't work in uh, assembly in, elections. In an assembly election. And you have sub-regionalism as an element to counter that. That Bengal should be run by somebody from Bengal, a local leader, a Bihar should be run by a Bihari. You know, that kind of thing. When it comes to the national election, mm. this nationalism allows them to overcome all those limitations, the regional and sub-regional limitations, and override whatever limitations they might have. Okay, on those so things. we have to have another conversation about how exactly our opposition party is supposed to tackle each of those, because that's going to be a longer conversation. But I want to ask you a different question as to why... Is Prashant Kishore interested in putting up this strong opposition to the BJP, given that, as you yourself said, that you have worked with all parties, including the very same BJP, the very same Mr. Modi in 2014. Why are you now part of some project to defeat the BJP? What is what has changed I, 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 for you? I, I, I'm not part of a project. Oh, whatever. You want My, to... I, no, you I, think told, it's an important I, I, I told you, I told you and many other people, okay. my life is not driven by this idea of defeating a person or a party. Okay, but, but why I do, do you think, think it's important? I, yes. I do think that this, in our country, we need, first of all, we need uh, a strong opposition. Mm. And Congress as an institution, as an idea and a space that it represents, must not let be allowed to get weakened. Uh, it needs to be strengthened. It is in the interest of the democracy, it is in the interest of the country and the when people you say at that large. Idea, what do you mean? The idea of, uh, whatever, whatever Congress is supposed to represent. What, like a broad, so, see, uh, like one, one side, one, one like side of. No, it's not about yeah. inclusive and yeah. uh, exclusive. I'm saying one side of the political ideology is BJP. Another side of that is Congress, broadly speaking, whether it's Trinamool, whether it's YSRCP, whether it's uh, okay. NCP or but, Congress, but they are question. all subscribing to literally the same set of ideas with some... Okay, so you're saying you're, you, you feel involved in this because you feel it's important for democracy to have this, uh, this kind of... Uh, two, there are two, two elements, two elements both, they both, should be a both, both should be, but and the, I personally feel more aligned to the latter than the... Than the, BJP. than the BJP side. That's, why? A, that's, 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 that's a personal choice you make. But that's what I'm curious. But why do you work, why no, you you work for a party? No, no, because, because I think you like, work. But what, I worked, what changed yes. then? What no, changed I, when, because I, you did I, work I, with the BJP? I, I worked for them, but I worked for them as a professional. Mm -hmm. So, when say you are a journalist, you are working for a channel, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily uh, buying into everything what channel does or says or stands for. But if, if you were to start a channel, you would like it to be more aligned to your own idea, your own ideals, and what you would like so you it to think, be doing. So you're saying ideologically, yes, you are more aligned or more comfortable, absolutely, with the what the, the Congress and the non-BJP space. Any that's, day. that's more any your day. any day, any day, any day, any day. The why and as many people ask this: Why should anyone trust you? They don't trust. They say that I, I'm, I'm Prashant Kishore has worked with the, he's still okay, close to the Prime Minister, he's working the BJP, why I, should they trust I, I, I have said this in other interviews, that if you do not want to trust, if you want to remain a skeptic, you will remain a skeptic. People are saying that I am a BJP agent. Yes. Somebody said recently, or many people say, 
Now, BJP is such a big, big BJP leadership. Is are you a BJP so, agent? No, no. So, <laughs> they are so full that they are planting their own agent in West Bengal to defeat themselves. I just leave it to the judgment of your uh, viewers. Is it possible? On what basis you are calling me an agent of BJP? On what basis? You some, have said. Some, some says it's because Nitish Kumar has crossed over. Hmm. Or Jagan Mohan Reddy is not taking on uh, uh, BJP. You have said, you have said that you continue to... These are the things which people also pick up. Like you say yes. that, you, that you continue to remain close to the Prime Minister. You not occasionally close. meet I, him. See, it's not about so close. So all of these things. What, 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 do you, what do you mean by being close? I, I would have said that if, you, if Prime Minister calls you, suppose you are one of his biggest critics and he calls you, can you afford not to reply, not to go and attend his meeting if he calls you? He, he hasn't called me. No, but I'm saying, but he's not <laughs> calling me either. For me. He, so he's not calling me either. But if he, he calls, I have to respond, like any other citizen. When is the to. last time you met him, if I may ask? What? When is the last time you met the Prime Minister? I don't recall. Okay. I, it has that, been long. You, you're evading the answer. You're, evading, no, you're no. normally very direct. I'm sure you no, recall meeting the Prime you, Minister. But, but see, first of all, when I'm meeting him, yes. it's not in the public, uh, it, it's not for the public consumption. So I would no, be, no, that's if, I, no, if, 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 I, if I reveal the date, I would not, I would be breaching the trust. But, okay, fair enough. But, but, having said so, I have not met him in recent past. You have not met him in the recent past. You must have heard what the Congress said in the light but of... But see, okay, if, can if, I, can if, I if Rahul Gandhi meets uh, Prime Minister, is he meeting him no, because there is a deal? What, what are you different. talking about? That's slightly why, different. Why, why, why that is different? We'll, we'll get into why later. Every because opposition time is short. Every, any opposition leader in parliament, they are meeting the prime minister. Are they all agents of uh, you prime must minister? Have, you must have heard, I think it was Pawan Kheda of the Congress who said, okay, it was Pawan Kheda of the Congress who said that, that in the light of what he saw happening, where the Mamta Banerjee's sudden attacks on the Congress uh, happened after she met the prime minister, and that there was some kind of TMC BJP deal where a certain peace was reached between the two, and the aim was to target the Congress, of, and, and you were very much part of that okay, I, I, conspiracy. I, it's not even worth replying. No, this, such, this, no this, such. This, this kind of commentary does not require, does not, doesn't deserve, does not, you know, an, with the doesn't, doesn't deserve an answer. I but don't in, want to glorify, glorify that statement. Okay, but in conclusion but then. Mamta Banerjee yes. fought Bengal election one of the toughest elections to fight, has gone on to win that election. Yes. You are calling her the agent of BJP. Right. And many others who are fighting and not fighting and literally giving a walkover to BJP, yes. they are the ones who are giving these certificates. What kind of nonsense we are talking about? Okay, so to come back to where we started then, at the moment you say that you are exploring this idea of... of uh, what could be done. Of what could be done. Yes. Uh, you are not necessarily seeing Mamta Bajaji as the, who, who you seem to be working most closely with at the moment. No, I, I, the, when you say most closely, like I haven't been to Calcutta for months now. I've not met her for months. So I don't know what people, when I was working with her, I was no, literally living in Calcutta. You keep popping up in states where the Trinamool is fighting elections, where there's no, Goa, where there's Assam, and so you, so you, anyway, you, you, you meet me and you ask which state we should go and expand. And I tell you, you can try out Meghalaya or you can try out Tripura. That is my contribution. That could be my contribution. But no, beyond that, it's Trinamool which is fighting. Okay. So you are, but you are still engaged with the exploration of that? Yes, I, I have to because any formation which you have to do hmm. would have to have the, these elements, the regional elements who, as much Congress is important, you have to have the regional elements embedded into it who have withstood the challenge from BJP in last 10 years and have been able to hold on to their turf despite odds being against them. Okay, but in the event, let's assume, and this is my very last question, if the Congress, because, and we've often spoken about this, that there are close to, I think, about 200 seats where it's a straight BJP Congress fight, and the BJP has been winning about 90% of these seats in the last two elections, broadly I'm saying. 95, right? yes. 90, 95% of these seats, which gives them straight away you know, 170, 180 seat advantage. If the Congress is not competitive in these seats and they slowly start to, do you think there's a possibility that a party like the Trinamool or some, because these are states like Rajasthan, 
Madhya Pradesh, any, Gujarat, any, etc. Any, any regional party or a leader who wants to have a national footprint, mm. they have to have a five to ten year perspective. It cannot be done overnight. Is it possible? Yes. But it is possible in five to ten years. It's not possible in five months or, or ten months. So, so for a party like the, hypothetically a party like the Trinamool to try and no, become a national, no, no, any party. No, I'm telling you, you it has to be five you to don't years. have to talk to me. You have to see there are only two pan-India party and look at their journey. Congress has been built with all the greats and the founding fathers of this country and still it took more than 30 years before Congress became pan-India at a political organization. Right. I'm talking about early 90s, uh, sorry, uh, last century when, you know, it took 30, 40 years hmm. before they became pan with a political force of, of pan-India nature and impact. Similarly for BJP, it has taken more than 25, 30 years. So if you are very smart, much smarter than those who founded Congress and BJP, maybe technology shortens the time and all. Maybe what people achieved in 30 years, you can do it in 10 years. But how smart you have to be to achieve something what people have done in 30 years to do it in three months or three years. Just not possible. Okay, five to ten year window. That's a that's a interesting, but also I think realistic uh, window for anybody yes. to try and create that footprint. Let's see, Prashant Kishore, how that pans out and what your role in that is going to be. But thank you very much uh, indeed you. for having this conversation. Thank Thanks you very much.